To me, this platoon gear system is one of the most interesting and unique parts about the game. Not only does it allow you to express yourself in your clothing choice and style, but also is directly connected to your playstyle. Your gear shows who you are and how you want to play the game. With that level of importance, it is weird that the game itself never really explains how exactly it works. All we get is a quick run speed up increases your run speed. Like, wow, who could have guessed? Without third party resources, I would have never known what exactly some of the abilities do, how they work or when they are active. The game basically just throws you into cold water and says, figure it out yourself, which is kind of impossible to do in a system this complex. So I want to make this video the only video you will ever need to understand gear abilities and what you should play on your weapon of choice, so I don't ever have to witness another Drop Roller Thermal Ink E-Leader in my games. Since the video would be one and a half hours long, if I give every weapon just a minute to explain, this will not be super in-depth, but should be enough to show you the do's and don'ts so you can make your next build with style and a plan. But before we get to the builds, let's start with the simple basics. In Splatoon, your character wears three pieces of clothing that you can equip with abilities each with one main ability and three sub-abilities, which I will mostly refer to as mains and subs for the rest of this video. How much these mains and subs impact your build is measured in AP, short for ability points. Mains are worth 10 AP and subs are each 3 AP. So in total, your three main abilities and nine sub-ability slots give you a base of 57 AP to work with. Now, APs are never brought up in the game, but they are important to understand graphs. Yeah, graphs might be boring, but they show you the return of investment for every ability point you add. Take a look at the graph of Quick Super Jump for example and you might be able to see what amount of AP gives you the most value. This dip at the start of the graph at only 3 AP shows that just a single sub already gives you a major decrease in the time it takes for you to perform a super jump. With this knowledge it is much easier to know how much of an ability you want to have in your build. If you want to see the impact of every tiny change you don't have to stare at graphs and calculate everything but just check out Sender.Inc, the website that is at this point basically the backbone of the Splatoon community and combined with Inkypedia and my 5 years of pro play experience are my sources for this video. There should be a reason for every ability you use and there's also a few abilities that the game just doesn't explain to you very well. So I will quickly say a few words about all of them. Most abilities would require a separate video but I will give you the most important infos. Use Inksaver main for weapons that are very ink hungry like Explosher. Don't use them on weapons that don't struggle with ink efficiency like most shooters. Use Inksaver sub on weapons that often use their sub weapon. Splattershot Junior Bomb Spam is the obvious example and I don't ever want to see anyone use it for Sprinkler again. Ink Recovery can help if you don't have space for either of the abilities I just mentioned or just to be used in combination with them. Run speed is good on weapons like Charges and Splatlings which walk very slowly when charging, but should never be used on brushes and rollers since it does not affect the rolling speed. Swim speed is commonly used on weapons that have less range and want to get closer to fight, but also on heavy weapons that move slower in general. Special Charge is good on weapons that want to get their special often and fast and that don't die as much since you lose part of your special charge when getting splatted. Special Saber helps you out here. For any weapon that fights and has a useful special, you should be using one of these, since only one sub decreases your lost special charge from 50 to only 41%. So you have your special a lot faster after respawning. Special Power Up has a different effect depending on which special your kit has, so I'm going to show them all here and you can just pause the video if you want to read them. Best examples are two subs of Special Power Up for Tacticula, which increases the duration from 17 to 19 seconds, and it doesn't make any sense to be used for Booyah Bomb, since its only buffs are the time you can hold the bomb and charging time without pressing Booyah, which is useless. Quick Respawn is a bit tricky, so I will link a video that explains stability in more detail. It can be played on a lot of weapons, which all share that they are made for fighting, don't rely too much on other abilities and want to reduce the punishment in case they happen to lose multiple fights, since Quick Respawn only activates if you get splatted without splatting another person since your last respawn. Quick Super Jump I already mentioned earlier. One sub should be played in almost any set. Sub Power Up depends on what sub weapon your kit has and makes a lot of sense if you use that sub frequently. Examples are Spellshot Junior to throw your bombs further away, or on sub weapons like Beacon so your team can jump to them faster, but it doesn't make much sense to be used for Sprinkler, Point Sensor, Ink Mine or Angle Shooter. Ink Resistance gives you more frames until you start taking damage when walking in enemy ink. This helps against damage combos that would otherwise get you killed and also weapons that don't paint well below their feet. Sub Resistance reduces damage and tracking time from sub weapons, but it's mostly 
useful on two subs against fizzy bombs, since you can tank two direct and three indirects, and also three or more burst bomb indirects. Intensify action decreases your bullet spray when jumping, allows you to charge your squid surge faster and perform more consecutive squid rolls. What matters the most is the better bullet spray, also called RNG. For blaster weapons, it scales differently than for the other classes. Only one or two subs usually have the most impact and it obviously doesn't make any sense on weapons like chargers, rollers or brushes that don't have any bullet spray to begin with. Opening Gambit is active for the first 30 seconds of the game, but can be extended by 15 seconds for every assist and splat you get. While it's active, you get 30 AP or 3 main abilities worth of swim speed, run speed, ink resistance and intensify action. All of these buffs however run out if not extended, which means that for the rest of the game you have a completely worthless ability slot. Last Ditch Effort, also called LDE, is one of the best abilities currently in the game, even after the nerf it just received in version 5.0.0. It gets activated if your opponent pushes past 50 and gets increasingly stronger the closer they push to 30 points. With 30 seconds remaining or push down to 30, it is fully activated and gives you 18 AP or 6 subs worth of ink saver main, sub and ink recovery. This means that your ink efficiency gets boosted by a lot overall and this ability is really really good on a lot of weapons. Tenacity passively fills your special gauge the more players on your team are down. It's just a worse version of special charge since it isn't always active and the effect it gives is just not that strong. Comeback on the other hand is a great ability for weapons that fight and die a lot and is usually used in combination with quick respawn. It is active for 20 seconds after respawning and gives you 10 AP or 1 main of ink saver main and sub, ink recovery, run speed and swim speed up and also special charge up. Ninja Squid makes you almost invisible after swimming in ink for half a second but decreases your swim speed. This means that it's usually run in a combination with swim speed to make up for that. Haunt marks the person that splatted you and disappears when they themselves get killed. It often is played with a lot of quick respawn and has the bonus effect of applying respawn punisher when you splat the marked player. Thermal ink marks your opponents when you hit a direct shot and lasts for 16 seconds. This means that the exposure or blaster shot explosion will not activate this effect, so it doesn't make sense on a lot of weapons, but I will show you the ones where you can use this ability. Respawn punisher increases respawn time and special gauge penalty for you and any player you splat. This means that in order to get the most value from it, you should die very few times in relation to the amount of kills you get. It is best on weapons that stay in a safe position and get kills from afar, such as E-Leader, Hydra or Charger. Stealth Jump and Drop Roller both serve to reduce the risk of getting your Super Jump point camped. Stealth Jump hides the marker from distant players and Drop Roller lets you perform a roll upon your landing. Stealth Jump is better in most situations and generally best on weapons that die more often and upon respawning want to quickly get back into action. Lastly, there is Ability Doubler, which is exclusive to the Spellfest shirt, but even if it wasn't, it wouldn't get played, because instead of being worth 19 AP, the Ability Doubler makes the shirt worth only 18. This might not be much, but there's really no specific gear where this effect serves a purpose. And that is it for all the gear abilities in Splatoon 3. Lastly, let's take a look at the three categories of abilities before we dive into the builds for every weapon. First off, utility subs. Abilities such as Quick Super Jump are run consistently for a variety of weapons, but usually make the most sense to only be used in small quantities on one or two sub slots. Main specific abilities can't or don't make any sense to be used on one or two sub slots because they usually don't have much value in small amounts. Lastly, pretty much don't use these. Abilities that are useful only on a handful of weapons and specific playstyles or just a weaker version of another ability. Yeah, you can play whatever you want. It's just a game and we all should have fun. But some of you just have to stop cooking. In no way do I want or could I force you to copy everything I show in this video. But feel free to adapt the builds to your own personal preferences. This is just what the best players use and I hope that this video can help you if you're interested in what gear you should play but don't know where to start from. I want to go through this by weapon class. So first, let's start with Stringers. For Tri-Stringer, your main abilities should be Last Ditch Effort to enable you to throw more Toxic Mists, since the weapon itself is very ink efficient and doesn't need main saver. One main of run speed to increase your strafing speed and Optic Trailer to enable it to one-shot Wavebreaker, two-shot Crab Tank, two-shot Booyah Bomb and break the Rainmaker Shield in only three shots. As a long-range weapon that should die very few times, Quick Super Jump and Swim Speed let you quickly retreat from bad positions while Sub Defense and Ink Resistance decrease chip damage. The Special Charge enables you to get more of Killer Wave 5.1, which is a great special for the weapon to combo with and chip damage opponents for your teammates. Reflux is the best turfing weapon and does not depend much on gear, so instead you focus on Special Charge to get your 10 time missiles a lot. Last Ditch Effort allows this already insanely well painting weapon to have even better ink efficiency. All subs are used for utility subs to make it easier to move around quickly and survive. 
Splatana Wipa should be played with a full QR set or the basic combination of QR and Taunt or QR and Comeback. And of course, always use Stealth Jump. Wiper is fast and ink efficient without any added abilities. But if you go for a full QR gear, you can put up to 3 subs of ink recovery in there to recharge ink quickly after throwing torpedoes. If you play Comeback, there's no need for the ink recovery subs or swim speed subs, since Comeback gives you 10 AP or a main of all the ink efficiency and movement buffs for 20 seconds after respawning. Always put a sub of quick super jump there to get back into action quicker and depending on personal preference you can fill the remaining slots with other utility subs. You can reuse some of this gear for wiper deco as well, but exchange parts of it for a sub power up, special charge up and special saver, since you want to focus a bit more on supporting your team with fast beacons and a good amount of tenta missiles. Depending on your playstyle you can also switch out the comeback for a last ditch effort. Splatana Stamper is a powerful main weapon that fights a lot and used to be played with a full QR gear, but since its ink efficiency got nerfed, it's usually much better to run comeback or LDE, swim speed, two subs of main saver, of course stealth jump, and fill the rest with a combination of utility subs. If you want to be able to throw burst bombs further, put a few subs of sub power up in there. For Spreadbrella, LDE and two subs of main saver help this weapon with its pretty bad ink efficiency. A balance of run speed and swim speed help the weapon a lot in fights, and since you will fight with this thing, it's helpful to wear a special saver and maybe put a few subs of special charge if you ever want to get your 200 point tri strike. Depending on personal preference, you can always add stealth jump, play less swim speed, or increase the amount of main saver, and of course, don't forget your basic utility subs. Tenderbrella can use a lot of different abilities, but you can never go wrong with a QR and comeback set. A main of main saver instead of comeback or two additional subs paired with comeback make ink management a lot easier. If you place a lot of beacons, add two subs of sub power. If you play quick respawn, paired with stealth jump, and if you want to have an even stronger ink fact shot and suck up chumps instantly, use object shredder. For Tenderbrella brother, you can play the exact same QR comeback or QR main saver gear. No amount of gear abilities can help undercover brother, but since the strongest part of the weapon is its high special output, you can try to buff that by playing special charge, LDE and special power up. Mix in your utility subs and voila, still the worst weapon in the game. Both ink brushes are not gear dependent at all, so just use the classic comeback QR stealth jump combo, stack as much quick respawn as you want and use the remaining slots for utility subs. The one sour special power boosts the duration of killer whale and stamp by a little but very valuable amount. As an octobrush, you want to be able to sneak up on people, so Ninja Squid is your best choice. Stealth Jump and Utility Subs take up some space, and you can use the last main ability slot for Swim Speed or LDE and squeeze in as much Swim Speed as possible since Ninja Squid lowers your base Swim Speed. Paintbrush benefits a lot from its recently buffed ink efficiency, so we're now able to use more slots for other abilities than just main saver. As with Octobrush, Ninja Squid is optimal for getting closer. Stealth Jump is a must have, two subs of ink saver main are enough and you can use a pure of QR if you play more aggressively or use more swim speed instead. I definitely recommend at least two subs of swim speed, a sub each of quick super jump and sub resistance, but you can increase the amount of sub resistance if you catch yourself dying too much to bombs. Blob Lobber is one of the very few weapons that benefit from using thermal ink since you spray a lot of bullets over the map and once you hit them, you can try to splat them from behind cover or around corners. Its ink efficiency isn't great, so you should use LDE and a sub or more of main saver. The remaining sub slots can be filled with utility subs and two subs of special charge so your ink storm only takes 180 points to charge. In Rainmaker, Object Shredder allows you to break the Rainmaker barrier one slot faster, which can be helpful since you don't have a bomb. On all other modes, you should play Stealth Jump though. A lot of main saver is important for Explosher, as it's one of the least ink efficient weapons in the game. This much main saver allows you to slosh 12 instead of 8 times. It's really slow in general, and its swim speed is also slightly lower since it's a heavyweight weapon. To compensate for this, you should add a decent amount of swim speed and the other utility subs to help you get out from risky situations. For slosher, you can go with swim speed QR, QR comeback, or haunt comeback combinations with lots of QR subs. Leave space for utility subs, and if you play slosher deco and want to have a slightly longer lasting zip caster, you can implement two subs of special power up. But this is completely up to you. After its ink efficiency nerf, Sloshing Machine definitely needs comeback or last ditch effort if you still want to be able to make use of its fizzy bombs. Machine is also quite slow and has a long time to kill if you don't hit it direct onto your opponents. So run speed and swim speed give you at least good mobility to work with. Besides that, all you need is stealth jump, a sub of main saber and utility subs. For tri slosher you can decide between comeback QR and comeback ninja squid. Since it has inkjet, you want to use at least two subs of special power up, which will give your inkjet a noticeably bigger damage radius. A sub of special saver is very nice to have since you will usually die a lot and keep in mind to use more swim speed if you go with ninja squid but otherwise just go with the usual utility subs and use stealth jump to hide your inkjet jump point. It's possible to play tri slusher nouveau the same way you play tri slusher and the two subs of special power up are perfect for tactic cooler as well since it boosts the duration by two whole seconds. 
Something else I would recommend over QR for this is LDE and Special Charge. This is especially good on Splat Zones where the boosted ink efficiency allows you to throw a lot more fizzy bombs. The remaining slots can be used for your preferred utility subs and the shoes should of course have Stealth Jump. Next up, Splat Links and starting with the Ballpoint Splat Link, which was the go-to ink chip weapon for a while now. As of Tristosha, you want to use at least two subs for special power up, but can also increase this to one main one sub to make your ink shots even more dangerous. Depending on how much special power up you want, you fill the rest with ink resistance and run speed, since Splat Links like to move very fast while they charge their shots and shoot. Only two subs of intensify action give you much better bullet spray, so it's more likely to hit your target, and Ballpoint is one of the few weapons that use drop roller instead of stealth jump. This is because after landing and rolling away from your jump point, you often still can get your charge and trade an enemy player if they try to camp you off. Heavy Splatling and Heavy Splatling Deco use very similar builds since they are played pretty much the same. For Heavy Deco's Kraken, I recommend you use two subs of special power up to increase the duration a bit. On Heavy Splatling with Wavebreaker, special power up doesn't make a lot of sense, so just replace them with special charge. A sub of intensify action is enough to have a big decrease in your bullet RNG, and the rest should be one main of ink resistance and a lot of run speed. Since you stay further back, you shouldn't really need any utility subs. For Hydra Splatling, you should use almost the same gear as on Heavy Splatling, but also try to implement swim speed since Hydra is a heavyweight weapon, so its base speed is lower than most other weapons. This is also why you should use more utility subs on it, since it will sometimes just be too slow to get away from nearby bombs and opponents. Two subs of intensify action are optimal, and depending on personal preference, you can use two to three subs or a main of ink resistance. Mini splatling and zinc mini splatling need, you guessed it, run speed. You can use LDE on both, up to three subs or a main of ink resistance and fill the rest with whatever utility subs you like. Two subs of special charge are also nice to have if you want to get your special more often. Following the pattern of run speed, we have Nautilus 47. Nought can hold its charge by swimming in ink, so swim speed has a lot of value for this weapon. You can customize the amount of swim speed, run speed and ink resistance to your liking, but if your gear has a balanced amount of all three, a few utility subs and stealth jump, there's really no wrong or right. Next up, all weapons of the Dually class can be played with the comeback QR stealth jump combo and only get tweaked to adapt to strengths and weaknesses of the main weapons. Splat Duallys, for example, use this basic combination. A sub of intensify action is enough to reduce your bullet spray by a lot, and the remaining space can be used for utility subs to your liking. Gluga Duallys, in contrast, have bad ink efficiency, so to make up for that, I recommend you use a main of main saver. Also, if you catch yourself jumping a lot while firing, you should equip two subs of intensify action and can use the other slots for utility subs. Both the dark and light tetra dualies are the best example for a full QR weapon. All they do is rush in, fight, maybe get a kill, but at least try to distract enemies. So for that task, all you need is a lot of quick respawn, stealth jump, and depending on your own taste, comeback or haunt. If you want, you can also add two subs of special power up to increase the duration of your zip caster for light tetras. You can also use the exact same gear for Devil Duelies Nouveau, but for the standard Devil Duelies, I would recommend at least two subs of sub power up to improve your beacons. Intensify action is optional, but two subs would do the job. If you use comeback, there's no need for added swim speed, but if you don't, I recommend two subs and fill the remaining slots with utility subs of your choice. For the dually squelchers, I asked Jared, the best dually squelcher player outside of Japan, and he's using this build for the weapon. LDE to increase ink efficiency, paired with two subs of main saber and quite a lot of intensify action, since you want to be able to roll around and jump a lot. For the other slots, he's using stealth jump, swim speed, and utility subs. On the custom dually squelchers, it seems like Jared is planning to a bit more since he's using comeback instead of LDE, just a sub of sub power up to boost his beacons, a main of swim speed, and of course also stealth jump, intensify action, two subs of main saber, and utility subs. To start off rollers, we will take a look at Big Swig, main saber, ninja squid, and stealth jump. Its ink efficiency is decent, but this amount of main saber will give you two extra flicks, and ninja is good to get closer to opponents. Big Swig's object damage is its biggest strength, so there's no need for extra object shredder. The two subs of special power up are optional since ink fax radius has already recently been buffed, but I still play them to make the special just a bit stronger, and you can also try to implement special charge subs or replace the stealth jump with a main if you want to get even more ink vex. For Big Spig Express, you can just copy that gear and add a sub of main saver or whatever else you like instead of special power up. Carbon Roller is one of the least popular weapons since the deco version is just so much stronger, but if you want to play this weapon, I recommend Swim Speed, Ninja Squid and Drop Roller or Stealth Jump. Definitely use two subs of special charge and one of special saver since it's very bad at painting and it doesn't get its special value. Very often. If you want a longer lasting zip caster, go add 3 subs of special power up, but if not, you can just add more swim speed and use the last slots 
for quick super jump and ink resistance. With Comroller Deco, you can replace the special power up with Sub Saber and otherwise use more swim speed as well as a sub of ink recovery and maybe sub power up if you want to. Flingzer Roller is another missile spam and painting weapon, so you can use a pure or special charge up, LDE, and two subs of main saber as well as two subs of ink recovery for better ink efficiency, and round the whole thing off with two subs of special power up and a sub of quick super jump. Stealth jump should not be used since you surface the team's jump point that shouldn't make risky plays and instead focus on paint and getting missiles. For Kraken Roller, you can decide between Ninja Squid and Swim Speed on a main ability slot. The main or special saber and four subs of special charge let you get your Kraken more often for only 163 points. I personally like using two subs of ink recovery so I can recharge quickly after placing beacons, but you don't have to use them. Both gear sets serve a purpose, and you also have to decide if you want to sacrifice some more swim speed for a sub or two of sub power up to make your beacons more useful. For Black Roller, on the other hand, Ninja Squid is a must have, since you want to be able to sneak through the ink trail of your curling bombs or sneak up to send an offensively placed big bubbler. Splat Roller is one of the few weapons that also use a lot more quick super jump than normal, since you want to be able to quickly jump out if you get caught by multiple players in an unfavorable position. Swim speed is, of course, used because of the Ninja Squid and utility subs for the rest of the build. Dynamo Roller is the slowest roller, and instead of playing to survive and paint as you did in the previous games, you now have to play a lot more aggressively, since otherwise you will simply get overrun. This build is your best chance to have an impact on the game and you basically just want to sneak up or shark close to enemies, get a kill or trade as much as possible. I also didn't expect QR to be this popular on the weapon but it's basically the only thing being used right now by Japanese Dynamo players. And if you're new to playing Dynamo you should start off with this build that has more quick super jump and later switch to a build with less quick super jump and more QR instead. The two subs of main saber give you one additional flick. Bam Boozler needs run speed to walk faster when charging, special charge so you can get your special faster, utility subs if you want a sub or special power up, and main saver or LDE for better ink management. For Squiffer, stealth jump and a lot of swim speed is necessary, but for the third main ability you can play either LDE or Haunt. A few subs of special charge and one of special saver allow you to get your bubble more often and the remaining slots should be used for utility subs and whatever amount of swim speed you want. On Eliter, your main should be LDE, Respawn Punisher and Swim Speed. Respawn Punisher makes a lot of sense, since you shouldn't die much yourself, but every split you get has more value. Two or three subs of main saver and your preferred combination of utility subs and more swim speed complete the build. Good tuber could use the same gear as Reflux, so LDE, lots of special charge, utility subs and if you want to throw more torpedoes, you can use a main or sub saver instead of the second main or special charge. LDE and lots of special charge is also what you should use on Snipe Rider 5H. Two subs of ink recovery and one of main saver allow you to not walk too much about your ink management, and a main or special power boosts the tactical duration from 17 to an insane 20 seconds. During that time, the first tactical is active, you can already get your next one ready, since this amount of special charge reduces your points for special from 200 down to 170. On Splat Charger as well as ZF Charger, you can play this combination of Obje Shredder, LDE or Special Charge, and Swim Speed. Two subs of Ink Saver Main decrease your downtime by giving you one extra full charge, and the remaining slots are for utility subs. LDE should be used on Splat Zones, and Special Charge on the other three modes, since Triple Ink Strike and Ink Vacuum have more value in those other modes with movable objectives. Both Blaster and Range Blaster can be played with pretty much the exact same gear of Comeback, QR, Stealth Jump, Utility Subs, and two or three subs of Intensify Action to give you much much better jump RNG. When playing S Blast 92, Luna Blaster, Clash Blaster, Clash Blaster Neo, and Luna Blaster Neo, you can replace the intensify action with more quick respawn or add swim speed to your build. Luna Blaster Neo can also be used with LDE and a lot of sub saber and sub power up if you want to be able to be a fizzy spam bot for your team. On Rapid Blaster, I recommend a main or more of intensify action, at least one main of swim speed, stealth jump, and ink recovery with the other common utility subs rounding off the build. Rapid Blaster Deco gives more emphasis on its sub and special weapon. As with other ancient weapons, you should use two subs of special power up to increase the blast rate. Sub Saber or Comeback let you use more torpedoes. Keep a lot of swim speed and decrease the intensify action to two subs, which will still have an impact. You can also replace them for two subs of special charge, since its base points of special are 210, which is quite a lot for a blaster. On both Rapid Blaster Pro sets, I think you can play very similar builds to the normal Rapid Blaster model, but with a bit more focus on ink efficiency abilities, such as Main Saver or LDE. Fully activated, LDE gives you 17 instead of 12 shots per ink tank, and 1 main plus 1 sub of Main Saver, 15 shots. Now, let's get into the final weapon class. 
Shooters. For Splusher Medic, you want to swim fast after your curling bombs without getting detected. So Ninja Squid paired with a lot of swim speed is perfect. Comeback, stuff jump, and utility subs are really everything else you need. Neo Splusher Medic is made for Killer Whale and Beacon Spam, which should be reflected by the abilities you use. Because of the weapon's very low range, you will have to get close to people, which increases your risk of dying, so comeback is also definitely worth to use. Usually, Neo Splusher Medic gets played with LDE, Special Charge, and Stealth Jump. Two subs of Swim Speed and Ink Recovery feel great on the weapon, and the rest are all utility subs. The basic Splash or Medic can be played in very different styles, so this is also shown in the amount of different gears you can play. Most people prefer Optic Shredder over Stealth Jump to easier win crab fights, but if you know you won't face another crab tank, you can just switch it out for Stealth Jump. Use a main or special charge if you want to play more for your crab tank. Ninja Squid if you want to play more on the front line, Sub Power Up if you want to support your team by throwing burst bombs from far away, and Swim Speed is always nice to have. Depending on your choice, you should use some of the other abilities on at least two sub slots. If you don't choose sub power up, make it at least two subs, and one or two subs of ink recovery and utility subs fill the rest of the build. On Jet Squatcher, use lots of special charge and usually object shredder rather than stealth jump, but both is possible. Two to three subs of intensify action, your preferred utility subs, and if you want, you can boost your infect radius by going for two subs of special power up. You can also replace one main or special charge with LDE. This LDE build is also what I would recommend on custom Jet Squelcher. For Splattershot Jr, I recommend the build I personally use a lot. LDE, Special Charge and Stealth Jump, 3 subs of Sub Saver, 2 each of Sub Power Up and Ink Recovery. This build lets you make a lot of use from your ability to spam Splat Bombs without worrying too much about your Ink Tank. Especially when LDE is activated, this build feels super smooth to play. If you don't super jump in, you could just replace the main of Stealth Jump with Sub Saver. You can also use the exact same build for custom Splattershot Jr. Splattershot Pro uses either LDE or Comeback, paired with some swim speed, 2 to 3 subs of intensity for action, stealth jump, and utility subs, and main saver wherever you have space left. Copy that build for Force Splattershot Pro, but use two subs of special charge up since the main weapon doesn't paint very well, so you usually struggle to get your 210 point booyah bomb. Like other tactical cooler weapons, ends of 85 should use two subs of special power up. For mains, the best in Splatstones, Tower Control, and Clan Bits is LDE, special charge, and stealth jump. Two subs of run speed are pretty nice to have, since the fastest rate speed often helps in fights where people aren't used to you moving that fast. Utility subs and another sub of special charge fill the remaining slots and reduce your points for special down to 162 points, which lets you chain one tactic cooler after another. The only mode where I recommend comeback over LDE is Rainmaker since you will usually pick up the Rainmaker and die a lot more often than in the other modes, so comeback is great to get your special fast after respawning. For ends of 89, I actually recommend the same build that I used for Junior, only with run speed instead of sub power up. This is because you can get a lot of super chumps and throw a lot of auto bombs, which is the main reason to play this weapon. Spadashot Nova can already walk pretty fast when shooting like NZEP, so I recommend a main of run speed to amplify this strength and use the other two mains for special charge and stealth jump. I personally like two subs of ink recovery so you can throw more point sensors, add utility subs, and if you like some special power up. If you want to be different than everybody else, this one is one of the few weapons that makes sense to be played with opening gambit. Opening gambit usually only lasts for 30 seconds, but as I explained at the beginning of the video, can be extended by 15 seconds for each kill and assist you get. With Point Sensor and Killer Whale Spam, your goal is to farm as many assists as possible to keep this ability activated. Anaki Splatish at Nova was played at the height of the Ancient Meta for the only purpose of getting it special, which is also very visible in the build you should play. A pure of Special Charge Up, 1 main plus 1 sub of Special Power Up, Drop Roller, Run Speed, a sub of Ink Resistance, and Intensify Action. Aerospray RG's purpose is to spam Booyah Bombs, so there really isn't that much to explain behind this build. Aerospray MG's purpose is to paint and fizzy spam, and occasionally cheese a zone, so the three steps of special power up are to increase the reef slider painting radius, which can make a pretty big difference in your game. 52 Gal has very bad jump RNG, so the three subs or a main of intensify action reduce this weakness. Lots of swim speed, utility subs, and stealth jump are used in most builds. If you want, you can also do variations with comeback or ninja squid since the weapon itself is really not gear dependent, and its only weakness is the bullet spray. A pure or special charge lets H3 nozzle nose get hectic cooler with 160 64 instead of 190 points. LDE and Stealth Jump are recommended and I'd fill the rest with two subs of Sub or Main Saver, two subs of Special Power Up for the cooler and each a sub of Ink Recovery and Ink Resistance. Quick Super Jump and Ink Resistance are nice to have, but you'll have to decide which combinations you like best. On H3 Nozzle Nose D, I recommend a combination of Ink Management Abilities, Special Charge, Utility Subs and Stealth Jump. Sub, Main Saver and Ink Recovery are all very good so you can play better around your Splash Wall and the Special Charge lets you get your 200 point bubble a lot faster. Just like 
like Enza Bonova, for L3 Nozzle Nose, you want to have at least a main or three subs of run speed, a main or two subs of intensify action, stealth jump, and then whatever amount of swim speed and utility subs you prefer. If you want to make your crab tank 10 points cheaper, you can also try to implement two subs or special charge. On L3 Nozzle Nose D, you will keep around the same amount of run speed, swim speed, and intensify action, but I suggest come back since you will be fighting more than with the standard L3. Squeezer gets played with a lot of swim speed and a little bit of run speed to increase its overall movement speed. A sub of ink recovery lets you manage your ink better after you use a splash wall. Stealth jump or optic shredder are both fine and utility subs take around half of the total sub slots. If you are already very comfortable with the main weapon, you can try using thermal ink on it, which lets you pre-fire from a safe distance and puts a lot of pressure on the enemy after you manage to mark them once. This for example is the gear that Atomic, the best European squeezer player, uses currently. Just like Special Medic, the Splattershot is a very versatile weapon, so there's a lot of gear combinations that make sense for different kinds of playstyles. You can do a Comeback Ninja Squid, a LDE Swim Speed, a LDE Intensify Action, a QR Swim Speed, or full QR Bolt, but if I had to suggest only one, it would be Comeback Swim Speed Self Jump, since currently with the high popularity of Tacticooler, you will still often be visible even with Ninja Squid. For the subs, as with most other shooters, you can just use a bit of intensify action and utility subs or even a little more swim speed. The tender attack splatter shot can be played with the very same build but if you want to go for more tri strike spam I suggest you use a LDE special charge combination. The subs are mostly the same but just make sure to use at least one sub of ink recovery if you want to throw a few more bombs as well. On 96 scale deco I recommend this build which is mainly made for a few key aspects. Increase the duration of your kraken by almost a full second, decrease the points for special from 210 to 199, make ink management easier and massively decrease your jump RNG. So you decrease your weak points and amplify the strengths of the kit. And now to finally complete all 90 weapons currently in the game, we have 96 Gal, one of my favorite weapons. And here's the build I use, which reuses parts of the 96 deco build I just showed you. Object Shredder is very nice to have if you want to suck up super jumps instantly and just helps the weapon sometimes since without a bomb it can struggle to deal object damage. Since Ink Bag also got a bit stronger, you could replace Object Shredder with Special Charge Up so you can get it for only 175 points instead of 190. Hello, Toyoban from the future here. And since this video was a massive project, enough time passed that we now have 8 more weapons to cover. So let me quickly add them. Note that at the time of recording this, all those weapons are not yet playable, so take these with a grain of salt. Let's start off with Dreadringer. Dreadringer is actually insanely ink hungry and even less ink efficient than Slushing Machine. To compensate for this weakness, I suggest a few subs of Main Saber and Comeback. I don't have the exact data for the ink consumption yet, so if you're interested in this weapon, I suggest you just check out Sandrod Ink after the weapon is actually released and see what amount of Main Saber makes the most sense. With Free Slider as its special, the weapon has a very offensive kit and can deal a lot of damage. So when playing this aggressive, it's of course good to pair up comeback with a pure off quick respawn, stealth jump and utility subs of your choice. The heavy edit splatling might have a pretty long charge time, but its movement speed can be incredible fast with the right amount of run speed. I recommend 3 mains and 2 subs, then add 2 subs each of special charge up and special power up to boost the duration and lower the points for special from 190 to 180. The remaining slots are for utility subs. For the new blob Blobba deco, Isaac, the best blob Blobba main in the west, is using these 2 builds. The build with 4 sub special power up give Kraken a 8.7 second duration and the gear with 1 main, 2 subs make it 8.9 seconds. So which one you prefer is really up to you. The 3 subs of special charge up lower the points to special from 200 down to 185 and with comeback active it even goes down to 173. So with the pretty good blob blob paint, you should be able to get your special pretty quickly. For the new Incline Tri-Stringer, Snipes, the best Tri-Stringer player in the West, uses the same gear as for the normal Tri-Stringer, but with one more main of run speed instead of LDE, since you won't throw a sprinkler as often as Toxic Mist. Now, I'm gonna be real with you, I have no idea what other gear to play on Gold Dynamo than the build that I already showed you. So let's just stick with that one. On Sorella Brella, Comeback and Special Saber let you get your inkjet more often and with only 175 instead of 190 points. Two subs are special power up as usual for inkjet. 
run speed is great for faster straight speed, and the three subs of main saber combined with comeback let you shoot 20 instead of 15 times per tank. Now, there's of course a lot of possible variations for Bob and Nouveau builds. But to keep it simple, you can pretty much just copy the heavy splatting build I showed earlier. Use a main or special charge, two subs of intensify action, and a sub of quick super jump paired with lots of run speed and a main of ink resistance, and you're good to go. I don't exactly know where to start with custom GoTuber, but I think this could make some sense. Every time you use hammer and end up in a bad position, this amount of quick super jump lets you back out almost instantly. LDE paired with at least one sub of sub saber lets you throw two fizzy bombs, but I'd add another sub of sub saber so you can start spamming even without LDE being fully activated. Now, to complete all 98 weapons, we have Octobrush Nouveau. And the only things we change compared to the base Octobrush are these two main abilities. Comeback makes more sense than LDE here, since it doesn't have a bomb and the added special charge from Comeback and special saver let you get your ink storm fast after respawning. The sub power up boosts your beacons and the other sub abilities stay the exact same. But yeah, there you have it. Gear builds for every weapon in the game that I got from looking at what the best players personally play and from what I as another pro player think works best. With almost infinite possibilities of combinations, you can of course adapt these builds to how you like them. But now you should have an idea on where to start for your next build. This video was a ton of work to research, write and edit, so I hope you enjoyed this video and were maybe able to learn something new. If you did, please leave a like, comment what gear builds surprised you the most and sub to not miss out on the next video and so I can feed my editor. Thanks and see ya in the next one.